been a lot of, lot of rainfall, Louisiana, Texas area. It's changed the way that this fishery fishes. Winter weather advisories are in areas across the nation. This is Texas. We're going to have some rain chances across the North Texas. Jake Wheeler! Yeah, you know, uh, last three years have been nothing short of um, incredible. It's uh, everything that I've really hoped for, dreamed of, becoming a professional angler and then succeeding at the top level in the sport is is the top of my list of, of achievements and, uh, and goals for my life. You know, now jumping into how things have progressed, you know, 2021, was one of those breakout years. Angler of the year, the man who gets it done, he is the Academy Sports and Outdoors, Jacob Wheeler, what a year. You know, winning Angler of the year, winning three tournaments, I couldn't have asked for it to go any better. I think there's a point in your career and there was a point that if I had one, like one year that I feel like sort of taught me the most about myself it would have been around that 2021 time frame definitely 20 you know 2021 was that year for me it um it showed me that there was a different gear that i could go to and and and, and, and so you hear this 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 thought of you know well you know i had to learn how to win and 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 there's a different mindset like every time you know you go on the water you're like yeah i just want to win you know you hear that from everybody but then there's a, a a gear that i feel like we all have that we don't really realize that we have I thought it 2024 is 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 um <clears throat> i think the biggest thing you look at every single season is not get complacent um, I've been on a heck of a run. I've won a lot of tournaments. I've won two Angler of the Years, but last year I fell a little short. Not exactly sure what to say other than, we oh, you suck. Second place in Angler of the Year. Um, stings a little bit, you know? You, you, you come out on top every year, it's a, it's a fairy tale ending. Um, and then you have one of those years like it happened last year. I had a, one of the worst tournaments uh, oh, finishes suck. my career at Lake Murray, didn't make the right adjustments, was frustrated after that tournament, come back to Gunnersville, win that tournament, um, and put myself in a position to win Angler of the Year at Saginaw Bay and just come up a little bit short. You know, I reacted the right way, but you know, that one definitely stinks. So there's a lot more motivation, you know, it's, it's um, every single season, you're, you're not given anything in this life. So, so like to me, at, to start the season, I have a, a little bit of a chip on my shoulder. I know in that every single year is not gonna end in angle of the year. And you have to continue to be hungry. You can't get complacent. And it's easy to do when you have success is like, oh, this is just gonna happen every single time. But you have to sort of seize the moment. And every single sport, everyone's gonna have their time. And I realize that right now, I'm living in that time where I feel like everything's clicking. First day of practice, there's definitely a little bit of frustration. I, um, sometimes, you know, I came down to Toledo Bend in pre-practice, which pre-practicing is, you know, a month before we have an off limits period. So we have a month, 30 days where we cannot be on Toledo Bend. So I came down here about middle of December and looked around and the fish were biting. Like it was unbelievable actually. And so I had an idea in my mind of exactly what I thought was gonna happen. And that wasn't happening. Sometimes you can get in trouble in fishing like that. And so, Everything that I thought was gonna happen was not coming to fruition. All right, so we're here day number one of practice for the season. I, uh, here at Toledo Bend, the shores of Toledo Bend. Now this is a ginormous lake. It is literally like I, half the state of uh, Louisiana. I mean, I don't know, it's probably like 100 miles long, I'm guessing. I'm guessing it's 100 miles long. It's probably one of the biggest lakes I've ever fished a tournament on. Um, but it's, uh, Man, we're gonna see what happens. There's been a lot of weather. It's it's been so crazy this this January, like where things have gone one way and then it's going the other. 
So we're gonna find out. It was like super frigid cold in the beginning of January, and now it's like raining. I think they've had like 17 inches of rain, so makes it for a fun first run of the year. All right, water temperature's 55 degrees. So cool. yeah. Water's still rising a little bit. Okay, so right now we are just trying to sort of see what's going on with the water being coming up and, and, and rising. Uh, you know, these fish should start to push back in some of these, these creek arms and these little drains like this one right here. So I'm looking to try to determine and see if these fish are sort of funneling in, whether they're all the way back, are they sort of halfway back, or um, are they still on the main lake? Um, that's sort of just, you know, just setting down an idling, utilizing side imaging and looking through here. I'm looking for like schools of fish, you know, a, fit, a group of fish, you know, a decent number of them. I would assume with the this weather we've had and all the rain, the water coming up, that they're going to be pretty scattered out because that typically is what it does. But that's what we're doing right now, just sort of getting a vibe. I like to start by idling and sort of just not try to rush into anything, just take my time and, uh, get an idea of what's going on. When the wind blows, it gets pretty bumpy out there and it makes it very difficult to idle around, fish around, fish in open water, the main lake. So we were a little bit more limited on day one to sort of what we could look at and what we could see, where we could fish. Um, and so that really like, it put a little bit of strain on, on trying to figure it out. It added a little bit more to the, to the day. Uh, trying to get around took more time than normal. You couldn't fish in some areas that I wanted to fish that looked good. So it was definitely, um, it, it was more of a challenge, I would say, more than anything. And later in the week, we're supposed to have a little bit more calm weather, which would be a lot easier to be able to look at those areas. There you go. Dirt bait bass. All right, got us one, got us one. Water's a little stain in here. Fishing basically the drains, this is a Texas thing. Fishing the drains, fishing grass is typical this time of year, pre-spawner. Keep on, All right. Just firing out here in the middle of this thing. And, and I'll show you guys real quick here, basically all I'm doing. But up here, there's, grass out all in that drain you sort of see that sort of stringy stuff so you're just falling in the middle of the actual ditch or creek channel is what you would call it and just sort of finding out if there's some fish pre-spawning out here in the middle of sort of getting ready to go spawn you know they're a month away from actually spawning but a lot of times these fish will sort of set up in the area they want to actually spawn in you know, three weeks to a month before. With that rain and with that influx of warm water, there's no other place than, I feel like right here, it's also protected too, so. So minimum for this week is a two pounds, and that one's not gonna cut it, that's just a nice, you can tell like the fish are in the grass, just by the, how green their backs are. It's a real dark green back. That fish has been living in the grass for a while. Whenever you get a bite, you always make a cast in the, you get your line up, and you always make a cast in the exact same spot because you don't know if there's a little group of them right there in that grass. I gotta get up a jig header real quick here. I'm gonna rig up a little freeloader. Just a little bit shallower. I had a lot heavier heads on, so going to a 5 16 ounce finesse hybrid swim bait jig. And so this little dude right here, I've a lot of money on, caught a lot of big fish on. Back here. You guys have heard me talk about it on the channel. It is most definitely a fish catcher. And so the one thing that I really like about this is like that screw lock. So a lot of people think you just like shove that in there. Um, you don't, so you just screw it on like you would. And so I'll set it up like this, rotate that around the hook. One, two, three, four, It's about right. And then that really basically gives you more bang for your buck. You literally will get 
double the amount of fish on that particular bait or a swim bait like a like a mare um, than you would if you didn't have a screw lock. So a little bit longer to put it on, but definitely worth the time. There you go, just like that. Not a big one. Like a chunky little sucker right there. So, this is we're here at the first time of the year, Toledo Bend, and so far in practice, this has been the deal. This is actually we'll be out well, launching this at ICAST 2024. It's called the Mooch Minnow. That little dude right there catches a lot of bass, and when they're on small bait, I truly believe there's nothing better than that little bait right there. So. All right, that is, and we've caught a few today, but they've been scattered out. You really want to find groups of fish and this high water, what happens a lot of times in the spring, I'll tell you guys, let this guy go. What happens a lot of times in the spring is when the water's low or like basically the wintertime when the water's low, it's clean, a lot of the bait congregates together. And then when you have that big giant rain, a lot of the bait scatters out, which ultimately the bass scatter out as well. So a lot of times the bass will congregate in the, in the winter time, get together, they'll, they'll gang up on the bait, and now it's sort of they're scattering out and the bait scattering out, which is making it pretty difficult to dial in, you know, one specific spot. They're just out here in no man's land. There's some up there on the bank, I'm sure, eating crayfish. And so you just gotta go out here and sort of pan around and look around a little bit. But I, I think the grass might be the deal, but uh, we'll have to sort of dive into that a little bit more tomorrow. The frustration of not not figuring it out completely on day one. I, I know a lot of things are gonna change. Um, so it's been a crazy January. Um, all over the South, all over the country for the most part. You know, first off, the, one of the craziest cold snaps in the South, um, you know, crazy cold weather, uh, negative degree. You know, I think it was here around Toledo Bend, it was single digits, which is not not normal for Texas and definitely not down this far south in Texas. Um, so water temperatures plummeted. You know, water's freezing cold at this point. Probably these fish haven't seen this in a couple of years being in probably the mid 40s. Then flip the script and rain comes in, it starts to warm up. And from my understanding, they had 15 inches of rain um, or more in this area in the last week before we get here water comes up two and a half feet and when you think of a hundred thousand acre lake plus hundred thousand plus acre lake comes up two and a half feet that's a lot of water um water warms up it dirties the water up it, it, you know these fish don't know what they want to do yeah i mean um we're back baby you know it feels good to be back in the saddle it's um there's always a moment like before you start the season there's a little bit of anxiety there's a little bit of nerves because you're just especially have to have a good season like the last few you're like can i keep it up can i keep that going you know what i'm saying like you're it, it you know people look at you and they're like oh man you're gonna get another top 10 you know it's like every year you know that um that's not it's not a given and so to start the season off tomorrow uh here on toledo bend it's um Man, I, I, got, I got a little nerves, you know. I, I, I've been doing it a long time. You know, I feel like I'm a veteran almost now, but it's it's always those those first tournament of the year nerves that you're gonna have to work through, and you know, and that's that's part of it. But to to launch the boat, to hear your number blast off, and to to start chopping down the lake, um, that's that's something that I'll, I I just I never take for granted, and um, it's it's man, it's got a real in tomorrow. There you go. Yeah!